All righty. Uh, now we're going to take a look at uh, using um, finding the volume of revolution. Uh, the first example is finding the volume of revolution um, using f of x equals the square root of sine x as my function that I'm going to spin. And I'm going to spin this guy about the x-axis. Okay. Now this is what the graph of f of x equals the square root of sine of x looks like. That's what that guy looks like, right? Now, as you can see, this guy's bounded at the value of 0 and at pi, right? So I know that I'm going to be finding the volume from 0 to pi. Now, what's going to happen is, again, I can imagine having infinitely many of these little rectangles, right, that would go spinning around, that would go spinning and spinning and spinning around this x-axis to create what would look like this three-dimensional solid right here. Everybody see that? Okay, now, how would I find this volume? Well, again, what I want to assume is, and this is a blow-up, every one of these rectangles, well, again, it would form, as it spins around, it would form kind of a, a circle around this x-axis. I'm going to try and draw this. It would, it would form a circle around this x-axis, where the radius of that circle would be the length from here to here. And the thickness of that circle to form the disk would be dx or delta x, right? Well, again, to find the volume of this, of this uh, little uh, disk, I know that the volume would equal the area of the circle times the width of that disk, which would be dx, right? Well, if that's the case, to find the volume, I need to know what the area of the circle is. Well, to do that, I need to know what the radius is. Well, again, if I would assume that this is my radius of each circle, wouldn't that just be whatever f of x is? All right? So I know that the volume of each circle would be pi times whatever f of x is squared dx. All right? All right, so if I want to find the overall volume of all these uh, disks, I know that the volume would equal, well, the integral from 0 to pi of pi r squared dx. Well, again, pi can come out front since it's a constant, so I'm going to get pi times the integral from 0 to pi of, well, we established that the radius is just f of x, so it would just be the square root of sine of x squared dx. Now, simplifying this, I'll get the volume equals pi times the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx. Okay, so now, taking the integral of this, I get volume equal pi times, well, the integral of sine of x, if I'm going to get as negative cosine of x, and I'm going to evaluate that at 0 and at pi, right? So, plugging these values in, I get the volume equal pi times the integral I mean, times um, the value of negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero, right? So I get the volume would equal pi times, well, that would be negative of negative one plus one. So wouldn't that just equal pi times two? So volume would equal two pi. And so that would be the volume of revolution of this function around the x-axis. Uh, from 0 to pi. Okay? All right, let's take a look at a, at a washer method. All right, now let's take a look at uh, when we're a washer or a hole be created in our disk. All right, to find the volume of the solid form by revolving the region bound by the graphs y equals the square root of x and y equals x squared about the line y equals negative 1. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at what this would look like. So I've got my xy k, my xy uh, axis. So here's xy. I think the square root of x would look something like this. Y equals x squared would look something like this, right? And so this will be the region that I'm spinning, right? Now, what line am I spinning it around? Well, I'm spinning it along the, along the line y equals negative 1. So if I come in like this, this will be the axis that, in which I'm spinning this shape. Well, again, what's going to happen is, let's imagine just spinning one shape at a time. If I spun the y equals square root of x, well, wouldn't that be this shape with this radius 
that would be spun. And so I'd get a whole big solid region that would look something like this. It would just look something like this, right? Where that would be spun around, right? And so you'd get a bowl, all right? But then I would then be spinning the y equals x squared as well. And when I spin this around, that would dig out as I spin this around, right? I would get a, a, a dig out of something like this, right? That would dig out this area right in here. That, I'm sorry, that, that space right in there, that volume, right? Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong, that's the wrong spinning. My bad. When I spin it around y, with a line y equals 1, you would get a bowl that looks something like this. That's the uh, square root of x. And then when I do the, the x squared, it would look like this. And so what you would get is uh, just this area right here, this volume and this volume, that will be created, and this would be a big old empty space in there, right? Okay? So for us to do this, to find that volume, we say, all right, let's again go back to this. If I've got y equals the square root of x, and I've got y equals x squared, right? To find the volume, I would take, simply take the volume of my bigger shape, which would have a radius starting at the axis of revolution. I always go up to my furthest away curve, and that's going to be the radius of my big shape. Well, in this case, wouldn't that radius equal, well, let's see, this top function, the square root of x, minus this bottom value is 1, or negative 1. So that big radius would be the square root of x plus 1. Now, this smaller shape, the smaller radius would go from here to, say, only here. In this case, this radius would equal the top, uh, the top y value, which is, x squared minus the bottom y value, which is negative 1, so x squared plus 1. Now, to find the volume that would be created, we know that the volume would be just the subtraction of the two volumes, the bigger volume minus the volume, the smaller volume. So it would be the integral from, well, let's see, I would need to know what this intersection here is on the graph and what this intersection right here is. And again, you can do that by setting those equal to each other. And I'm sure uh, it would be pretty easy for you to find that the intersection would be from 0 to 1. Let me pull this out here. All right? From 0 to 1. Okay? So I know that the volume of this would be the volume from 0 to, uh, from zero to 1 of the volume of the big shape minus the volume of the small shape dx. Right? Well, again, the volume of the big shape should be pi r squared, where the radius, big R is my radius, minus the volume of the small shape, which would be pi r squared, and then each of these have a dx, so in parentheses. And that's how we get the volumes. Well, again, as you can see, the pi's are in common, so you can factor that out. And since that's a constant, I can just bring it outside the integral. So it would be the integral from 0 to 1, pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of my big radius squared minus my small radius squared dx. And we've already established that that would be from 0 to 1 of the big radius is square root of x plus 1 squared minus the little radius is x squared plus 1 squared. And then dx. And then that's what you use to find the volume. I'm sure, again, you guys can foil this out right here by hand, foil this out by hand, and then take the, um, the antiderivative by hand pretty easily. So I'll let you stop there, but that's the idea of finding the volume uh, using a disk, or in this case, a washer where a hole would be created uh, between the axis of revolution and the, and the curve, right? Okay? All right, uh, if you have any more questions, we'll talk about it in class.